This episode of What The Tech is brought to you by Harry's. For guys like you who want a great shave experience at a fraction of what you're paying. Go to harrys.com and get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code What The Tech when you check out. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech, I'm Andrew Zarian, I'm joined by Paul Theradas, I meet you every week, how you doing Paul? I'm pretty good. You shaved your head. I did. Well, my kids did, and my wife. It's kind of a pig pile thing. I don't know what to make of this. So, there's one thing that's a positive, you approve that your hair is real. Yes. Uh, We have a show here on the GFK Network for people who don't know. It's called The Ball Truth, and it's a show dedicated to hair loss and men dealing with hair loss. It's it's an insanely popular show, and there have been numerous discussions in the chat room, even on the Ball Truth Talk forum, if Paul Therott's hair is real. (laughs) And they have – it's the craziest thing. Viewers have blown up your hair, and they have tried to prove that your hairline – is not a real hairline, and it's actually a piece that you're wearing. Interesting. What do you say to all those people now? I, there's a video disproving that theory. <laughs> <laughs> my children's shaving my head <laughs> in real time. Uh, how do you have you ever? It's done like this? the Zapruder film. You can like frame <laughs> forward to the part where there's like a little glitch. Have you ever done this before? Uh, I have only cut my hair sh- this short one time, and uh, and actually I have a. I, I haven't looked for it recently, but there's a photo of me. I'm actually at the uh, Jacob Javits Center in New York. I think I was there for PC Expo. And this would have been, you know, 1999 or 2000 or something. And I was wearing glasses for some reason. And uh, it is not a good look, you know. <laughs> and I, that was my, that was my, the whole glasses shaved head <laughs> thing, you know. And that was my kind of fear was like, I'm going to shave my head and it's going to look really terrible. Yeah, everybody's been asking me, when are you going to shave your head now? Yeah. Uh, the answer is This never. is not the right time of year to do this. I can't shave my hair because it's not real. Paid a lot right. of money for this hair. You know, let me let me just say, that's a joke because a lot of people take things literally. My hair is yep. real. Uh, that's what I want you to think now. But I don't know if I would do that. I don't know if I could go through with shaving my head. Uh, but at least you didn't like bick uh, it, you know. Yeah. You didn't like go down to like nothing. Go yeah. like a Michael Jordan right. look, <laughs> right? No, it's bristly. Yeah, it's what, like a hedge. But here. listen, you got a good head. You you could pull it off. You got a good shaped head, Paul. You're lucky. <laughs> it could be bumpy. a nice big horse's head. <laughs> is what I have. Uh, this is not the ball truth. This is uh, what the tech. This is our first show of the year. Uh, we have so much to talk about, uh, but uh, since we're on the topic of shaving and on the topic of hair, why don't we talk about our sponsor, and that's Harry's. Uh, let me pull up the lower third here for Harry's. Uh, we're so happy that Harry's is joining us for 2015. Uh, Paul, you you have a Harry's uh, shaving kit. I have a Harry's shaving kit. Uh, for someone like me, uh, I don't really shave every day. So the Harry's has last I've, I've had the same razor since we started doing these ads and the blade well, has survived because I only shave, you know, I do besides I do. See, I destroy top. razors. I'm like Superman here. No, I go for the George uh, Michael look. So it's very groomed on the side. I'm going for that George Michael look. Uh, so, I, yeah, I can see it. So my razor has lasted this entire time. But for people who shave on a regular basis and they're really into shaving and getting the right blade. These things cost a lot of money, not Harry's. But when you go into the store, you know, you're paying four bucks a blade. Uh, right. It lasts maybe one or two shaves. Uh, some of the other ones like Gillette, Fusion, the other ones, they're not cheap and they're pricey. And when you go to the store, they lock these things up in prison. You got to call someone. You got to wait there. It's an entire right. hassle to get these razors. Uh, but with Harry's, they have this great system where they mail it to you. It's at your door. You you open it up. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have to, uh, you know, wait for some guy to bring it to you. Everything is made in their factory in Germany. We know what kind of cars they make, so imagine what kind of razors these guys are making in Germany. And the shipping is free right to your door. Uh, They have a phenomenal deal for our audience. 
Uh, if you use our offer code, what the tech at checkout, you get five dollars off your first purchase. Uh, that's a phenomenal deal, and they have some great stuff on that website. I'm a big fan of Harry's. Uh, I have the Truman set. I gave a bunch to uh, my relatives for Christmas, which it was a little cheating if you think about it, because like I knew, like you know, I, I ordered like twenty of them, and I just gave it to everybody that I knew. He's like, "Here's a Harry set. Here's a Harry set." And it's actually not that expensive. 15 bucks, you're paying for this thing, and everybody's happy. It looks cool. comes in a really nice box. And they have a bunch of uh, aftershave products and, and other shaving kits. Uh, Harry's.com. Enter coupon code WHATTHETECH at checkout and get $5 off your first purchase. I want to thank Harry's for supporting What The Tech. Uh, I thought you were going to take out your Harry's razor and shave it on um, <laughs> on. Uh, I, I mean, I, I wasn't Weekly. sure if I could even shave Ahead without that would have been a great it. spot for you sports. guys. I mean, I thought yeah. I thought Leo was going to go right into a live read for Harry's. They're going to take the sh- the rays and just start doing right. the Michael Jordan. <laughs> Didn't happen. You need the mustache yeah. too, like the Michael Jordan mustache. Right, right, right. right. What was that thing called before it was called a Hitler? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's who would know that. I don't. I, have I, no idea. I guarantee one of our viewers knows what that mustache was called because it was really popular. So uh, CES not, not the is happening. Chaplain. Yeah, the chaplain. Yeah, he called the chaplain. CES is happening. You don't go to CES, huh? I used to. I, I went for many years. Uh, I went to Comdex for many years before that as well. Um, there is zero reason for someone who does what I do to go to CES. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me that people even bother. Um, you know, the, the companies that I care about uh, brief me separately and individually and, uh, you know, Vegas is a mess during CS. CS itself is a disaster. It's so freaking big and humongous. Although I will say the one thing that has been different this year that you know maybe would have warranted showing up is in the past, everything they announced at CS was months and months down the road. A lot of it was yeah. designed for the holiday season, right? So you see announcements and you won't see the feet, the products until September, October, whatever. And this year, a lot of the PC type products that they announced are in fact available immediately or will soon be available within the next, you know, 15, 30, 60 days. Um, and so that's a nice change. I yeah. mean, that's that, that's interesting. Uh, I was surprised by the Intel announcement. I, I, was the Intel announcement for their chipset specifically for CES or they just timed it accordingly? Well, so originally they were going to announce that stuff in the fall. Uh, that Every Intel chipset I think is delayed, you know, off the original schedule. So you 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 will recall that there were lots of rumors last year about a new Mac, MacBook Air model. Yeah. It was going to come out in the fall. They were going to have an event for it, or maybe it was going to be part of some other event. And then it never happened. And that was uh, going to be around the Broadwell announcement. And the reason it never happened was because Broadwell was delayed. And so um, delayed to 20, you know, January, why not have it at CS? I think it was just a happy, happy coincidence. Um, like that announcement, it, it said available first, you know, January 2015. Yep. So it's available now, essentially, uh, or, or the end right. of the month. That's a really quick announcement. And that's surprising to see. And you're absolutely well, right. A lot of manufacturers are doing that now. Where th- well, it's- it, Yeah, but remember with Intel, too, it, it's a little different because uh, their processor families have some kind of a, a staged life cycle. So the, the first Broadwell chips that came out actually came out in the fall. Those were the uh, Core M products, right? Yeah. The, Low voltage, low power versions. Um, the versions that they announced at CES, which is good timing for CES, are the mobile chips, right? For the laptops, the convertibles, tablets, uh, things like that. And then uh, later in the year, I, I, I don't remember the timing, but let's say mid year or something, um, there will be desktop versions of those chips as well. You know, fifth generation core. I fives, uh, I sevens, I, yeah. I three, I five, I seven. Yeah, I, I'm very excited for the uh, for the new chipsets. I'm looking to build a new PC here, and I was about to order. Yep. Uh, literally, I, I was building the shopping cart as they announced the new fifth generations that are going to be coming out. Well, so I'm going to hold out now. I'm gonna, I'm going to wait a little bit. So here's what I'd say to that. So if it's for a desktop computer, actually, well, it would be right because you're building it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure there's a huge reason to wait. Uh, these processors are not going to offer a tremendous jump in processing power i don't think i mean maybe the desktop versions will but i doubt it um that's kind of an every, every other generation thing um you know for desktop i think uh haswell would be fine you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do the same thing by this way that, uh by the way this spring i'm gonna build my own pc as well and I, i'm not gonna wait for the 
the I mean, next there's, gen. There's in so fact, many options now. Like you get the uh, the 1055s or or the 1050s yeah. or the 2011s. You know the different chipsets. And oh yeah. So it, it's not as cut and dry, and you don't necessarily have to go with the highest end model right now. You could go with you know the 20 uh, the 1050s and get a tremendous machine out of it. Uh, it's interesting how Intel's releasing these now. Um, the yeah. biggest story for me, and, and we'll run down some of the stories, some of the things that we like from CS, but for me, it has to be this concept of fanless laptops really becoming the mainstream. Right. Um, right. Especially with the, these lower powered, what it's like a it's a fourteen nanometer chipset. Yes. You know, like this thing is virtually, it's tiny. You know, like, these are literally half the die size of the previous of the gen. previous generation yeah. which is unbelievable if you, yeah, if you think deep. about it how fast they're they're changing these chips and they're getting smaller and, and cooler and and the performance is great on them this is going to be the big change in the pc market you know we were talking about what is going to be the, what's going to kick the, the the laptops and the pc market into overdrive uh, windows 8 would that have been enough but if you think about it windows 8 came out in a time where the chipsets were not ready if these computers, these ultra thin, you know, the, the, yeah. virtually you, you detach them from the keyboard, but like super thin and super nice the PCs came out when Windows 8 came out, it would have been a different discussion right. we're having right now. The, it's the, goofy oh, because that's traditionally always been the problem with Windows. Windows has always been ahead of the hardware. Um, Windows doesn't get a lot of credit for that in technical circles for being ahead of anything. You know, people tend to think of it as old fashioned or whatever. But, you know, the truth is these major Windows versions always predate the hardware that's really optimized uh, for it. And it's not just the, um, you know, the thinness and lightness and chipsets, although that, that, that is absolutely the core of it. Um, you know, PC makers weren't really, I don't know, emotionally ready or however yeah. you want to say it, to uh, head to this touch-first mobile world. You know, they, they were not inclined to create convertible computers or detachable computers and things like that. Like, they just didn't you know, have their heads wrapped around that. And so when Windows 8 shipped, what we saw was a lot of garbagey traditional laptops without touch. And they did nothing to show off some of the stuff that was really actually really cool about Windows 8. And so I think one of the most exciting things about CES this year is the sheer uh, amount of PC-based announcements we're seeing, partially because Intel did choose to announce the chips out there. And just the quality of those things, you know, the really neat detachable designs and convertibles, uh, the type is, it wouldn't, it would not have been possible for these companies to have shipped this stuff two and a half years ago, whatever, when Windows 8 shipped. But uh, I mean, what a difference would that have made, you know, yeah. it's amazing to see that come together finally. Um, this is going to be the big, the big year, you know, we're going to do a prediction segment for the post show, which we're going to, we're going to air live here, but it's going to be on Patreon. Uh, but this is one of my predictions where. The, this mm -hmm. is the change that we see. You know, laptops have changed, obviously, over time, and they've gotten thinner, and they've gotten faster, and they've, it's virtually, there's no reason to have a desktop at this point if, if you have a laptop. But the fact that we don't need a fan, and these things are going to be ultra thin, and this is going to change from top to bottom. It's not going to be the Ultrabook market that really gets these thin laptops. It's going to be, this is just a laptop now, because we don't need a fan. Right. Um, this is going to be the big change. The other thing that I absolutely love, uh, and, and guys, if you're, if you're playing along at home for the drinking game, the no <laughs> bezel, the bezel-less Dell XPS 13. Oh, uh, people have been waiting for this, for you to acknowledge uh, this product. I, you know what? I did not acknowledge anybody on Twitter when they were writing it to me. The reason why, <laughs> it's not because I, I was ignoring you. I had a crisis happen here at, here at my house. We, we had no heat for like an entire day. So I was working on preventing these pipes from freezing i was putting like these little tiny heaters in every room it was insane but uh this thing is beautiful um i never thought i would buy a dell laptop i probably will buy this thing what do you yeah, think of it paul i mean it's stunning it's beautiful so my own personal thing with when it comes to laptops is this that size is not quite big enough for me the 13 uh, it's not the screen in this case because it, obviously a 13-inch screen is right at the lower end of what I would consider acceptable. Um, but it's an 11-inch form factor, the body, right? And it's just a little small for me. I'm a big guy, you know, so kind of hunched over the little device would be tough. Dell makes an XPS 15, which they only provided a very minor rev to. They didn't update the body like they did with the 11. 
the, I'm sorry, the 13, I guess they're calling it. Um, so I'm hoping later in the year they'll do an XPS 15 refresh. Sure. Where it's basically a 13 inch form factor, 15 inch screen and that kind of infinity bezel, whatever they're calling that. Um, would love, would love that. Would love that. Um, and so I personally, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be buying this one for myself. Um, but I think mainstream, this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, it's, I hate to call it a game changer. It's not a game changer. It's an evolution, but it's, it's an a, evolution that it's that a other wonderful are evolution. Follow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the point of this device, it's not, it's not going to, for example, we've this talked is not, about this, Andrew. We have, right? we have, I. we say, and we've said this explicitly, look at a MacBook air 13, look at the inch wide bezel on every side of that thing. You could fit a 15 inch panel in that thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That would be amazing. Right? And that's kind of what I want, right? I would yes, love. Yes, that's what I want too. That's I would love the same four factor. Give me well, the same size and just. Well, no, <laughs> but, that's what I but want. A device of that size. Yes. Yeah, no, that's what I'm waiting for. I mean, I, I like my Mac. I like my MacBook, and then if I could get one that that is virtually bezel-less like that, that's kind of what I want. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is the trend that we're going to see a lot of manufacturers follow. You know what's fascinating to me? We're talking about like how. The point of this device is that it's not that Dell's going to take over the market with this, but we're going to see a trend where other manufacturers like Asus, Acer, HP, uh, everybody else is going to start producing these bezel lists yeah, or very I mean, little bezel. Dell hit on, the, on this one feature. I think the, you know, people are like, oh my God, it's the product of uh, CS. Like, well, relax. It's uh, the, the bezel part of it is important. Um, this type of device, and by the way, it's important to note, this is not a folding, transforming computer. It's, it's a, a standard laptop, yeah. Uh, you couldn't really have a non-bezel device if it was ever going to be used as a tablet. You can't do that. You need some place to rest your fingers Absolutely. that you're not touching the screen. So this is not – this is also part of the reason I scaled back on the game changer thing. This doesn't change all consumer electronics. I mean the sad reality is that you know for a tablet or any device that's going to be used as a tablet, you have to have some kind of bezel. So this type of thing – is really only going to work on a laptop, right? It can be a touch laptop, but it can't be a transforming, bendy, you know, spindly kind of thing. Um, but you can look at the other devices that were announced at CES, and you know, each of the companies has in its own way hit on something that I think is important. And it, it's not like all of these things come together into one product, but depending on what you're buying or what you want, there are different things from different companies and different types of products. Uh, that are in their own way, you know, as interesting as what Dell did with the bezel. I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, and, and but yeah, I, you'll see laptops like this from other companies. Sure, I'm I'm positive you're going to start seeing them. I mean, even this week you'll probably get a couple of announcements of something like this. But the whole trend where like the Mac bezel, let's call it the Mac bezel, right? That rounded, thick, like it's the size of my thumb essentially, top, top, top and bottom. Everybody yeah. started doing that, and that became the trend where you had this big fat bezel. Uh, to for these like MacBook clones, I think this is going to be this. Now. I mean, people are going to start manufacturing these bezel-less computers, and I'm hoping Apple releases something. We, did you see that rumor for the for this mocked up 12 inch MacBook Air? Yeah, and uh, it's funny. Um, people are acting like this is some kind of revolutionary redesign. I mean, in in many ways, this is Apple going back to the original MacBook Air design. Uh, where maybe they pushed forward a little too quickly into this kind of ultra mobile form factor, it had very limited expandability. You, you recall that one had like a little push out drawer and it had two ports in there. It was like one USB yeah. port and you know whatever the other one was. Um, and so they're kind of going to that kind of a model. Um, I think it's notable that it's not a direct replacement for anything. They'll probably still keep the 11 and the 13. Um, and so it's almost like they're experimenting. You know, it, is it time yet? to an accepted device that is uh, even more of a toaster, you know, than a MacBook Air because uh, most people probably never plug stuff in anyway. And they probably, if they do, it's one thing, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I think there's some rationale to that. But I mean, essentially, they, they're going to have to, it, it, like, there's no Mac, there's one USB Type-C uh, plug and that does everything, right? That's right, your power. Right. That's your uh, thunderbolt. That's everything. By the way, um, you just pointed out the the one thing that is truly unique on that device. I I, I could have missed it, but I, I've not. I don't believe any of the devices we heard about at CS had this new USB plug in it. Right. I, I haven't seen it. No, I haven't so, seen a new USB. One of the things that has come up in the wake of CES is 
uh, Apple has worked very closely with Intel, and they usually kind of get first dibs on stuff. You know, um, it is it, it is notable in a way that Apple wasn't the first or among the first companies to announce a new Broadwell-based machine, which is what this thing will be. And I, I, you know, over the past couple of days, I had kind of wondered at that. And then this leak came out, and they're talking about this USB plug. And then I thought, okay, that that this is what they got. This yeah. is their bone, you know, that they were thrown. Uh, well, you, you're not going to be first with Broadwell, but you're going to have the USB port. I'm trying to think how much of an issue that's going to be for people to literally walk around with a dongle every time they want to plug something into a computer. You know, <laughs> now, now, like, think about it. If you're traveling, right, you're traveling yeah, with your laptop. Yeah. You're going to have the, the power adapter, and then you're going to have, like, this dongle that everything connects to. Unless the power adapter is a dongle. Well, um, uh, what, you know, when I travel with Surface Pro 3, which is another device, it's just a little too small. Uh, but one of the advantages to me, I should say, or for me personally, for many people, it's perfect. Um, one of the issues uh, I have when traveling with it, it only has one USB port. And so one of the things I bring is a, is a dongle, essentially. It's basically a... Uh, a USB port, like a splitter port. Ex what do you call it? A, a hub. Port ex hub. Thank you. Um, that also has a uh, an Ethernet jack on it, like a gigabit Ethernet jack. And so you get the four USB ports, Ethernet. It lays on the table. It doesn't just hang there off the port, which is kind of nice. Um, it's not terrible doing that kind of thing. And it, it's, I think day to day, you don't really need it. I I would only need it when I go somewhere. If I were to take this thing on a trip for a week, and this is my laptop. I'm not going to leave the house without the, the that hub. Yeah, but using it around here, traveling day to day, going to town with it in my bag, you know, I don't need to carry that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, it's not really necessary. Most people aren't plugging stuff in anyway. Um, I it just Bluetooth mouse. Um, you know. But you know, you're absolutely right. These devices, I mean, all laptops are now becoming toasters. There's no more CD-ROM drives. There's no more DVD drives on these things. No optical drives at all. Right, uh, right. It, it less is more at this point. And before we wanted everything, right? Like it was, we wanted 15 USB ports and we wanted all this stuff. And now you have one audio jack and two USBs and you're done. You don't really need it. I, that's a transformation of the PC and, and the laptop and the way we do stuff. Everything is, is just not there anymore. It, it's fascinating. So, so since yeah. we're on that topic, did you see that, uh, the, the stick, the Intel stick from yeah. CS? That thing yeah, is yeah, fascinating. Yeah. It's it's eight, it's Windows eight point one with Bing, and it's an HDMI dongle. So obviously it's going to connect with USB yeah. and power it. But it's one hundred and forty nine dollars, and it's a PC. Yeah, and that's the important thing. It's it's literally a P, you know we, there are many form factor PCs, right? We know that, but this is literally the miniest of you know form factor PCs. It's it is literally a self contained atom based PC, two gigabytes a little bit, two gigabytes of RAM, thirty two gigs I think of EMC MMC storage. Uh, USB full size out, USB mini or whatever it is, micro mini, I forget the for the power. Um, and it's just the self contained oh, and micro SD too. And uh, you know, you plug it in, use a US, I'm sorry, <laughs> you could use you could USB, but you would probably use a, a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, plug it into a display, and there's your computer, you know. Um, that's a neat idea. I don't know why I can't speak today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Things to um, hair. Your head is cold. <laughs> no, it's, I, I'm getting. I'm all stuffed up. I'm half sick here. But um, it's. I think this is a cool little thing, and and it's also Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is a type of Windows you can only get on new machines, right? And so typically you would get this on a low end laptop, a low end tablet, you know that kind of thing. Uh, this is a new form factor for this, so. Yeah, that's coming out. I think in March, and I'm, that's something I'll grab just to check it out. I'm, oh yeah, I, for 149 bucks, you know, you just pop it into. I mean, I was thinking, how would I be able to use this? Right, uh, you need obviously you need to get like a wireless keyboard and mouse where you can navigate around it. But it just it's a PC on on your TV yeah. essentially. You just, It'd almost be better if the, it, there are interfaces like this. But if you could get some kind of a Bluetooth uh, based, you know, remote control or something, and have some front end on there in, in Windows that would just launch stuff. You know, that, that might be interesting. Obviously, it's Windows, so you have access to everything. Netflix, you know, all that services. But also, it's Windows, so you have access to file shares. If you have a home server or a PC on your home network that has movies or music or whatever, that all works through there. Um, yeah, having Windows, there's some advantages to it. I mean, I was uh, HP announced some mini computers at CES as well, and I was thinking about grabbing one to use as sort of a, a living room type computer. Are you talking about like the little hockey um, puck one? Yeah. And yeah. 
Uh, there's an HP stream version, which is Atom based. It's like the stream laptops, but in a mini form factor. But there's also a pavilion version, which is uh, has higher end processors, more RAM, more storage. And, um, you know, those would actually work as home theater type PCs. You could conceivably put a USB based uh, capture card or a TV card or whatever on there and, and run Media Center. And uh, the, the possibilities are kind of interesting. So, so the, the it, pavilion version is running, let's see. Uh, the HP Stream Mini, which is mm -hmm. the, the lower end, is a Celeron uh, 1.4 gigahertz, uh, two cores, two threads, so dual core, uh, two gigs of RAM, and 32 gig SSD storage. The Pavilion version is a 1.7 gigahertz Pentium, I don't know what chip this is, Pentium 3558U. I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Um, so I guess it's an yeah. i. You know what? It's an i3 essentially. You got an i3 with eight gigs. Yeah, eight gigs of RAM and one terabyte. So they have different packages. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is a great home theater PC. But do you think are people doing that with these? Like, are people still doing home theater PCs? Well, I'm sure no, our audience not, not is. a lot of people. I mean, yeah. obviously, the the people that do that love this kind of thing. Uh, love doing it. I mean, I, they're not going to use this kind of computer for that. They're going to use a real you know, uh, some kind of a honking PC. It might be in a, uh, you know, stereo cabinet style enclosure or whatever, but, you know, they're serious about it. They have cable cards in there. It's, it's the, you know, it's the, these are real computers. Um, this is some kind of a happy middle ground, I think. In other words, on the really low end, you have like a streaming stick or a Roku or something. And on the high end, you have these really high end, you know, stereo component style living room PCs that are for home theater and so forth. But in the middle, you've got Windows and, and just a little Windows PC. And uh, mostly it will be for those services, you know, Netflix and all that stuff. But again, like I said, I, there, there are different ways to do things. And instead of putting all your media out in the living room on a big PC, you could all have all your living or uh, media on a PC in your home office, in your bedroom, down in your cellar. It could be in a home server if you do that kind of thing. And because this thing is Windows, not only can it access that stuff very easily, but it could do so in a way that it's much more efficient and more powerful than what you could do on, say, a Roku. Because... I have an app on my Roku. I can browse my home server, but it's it's, it's awful. The yeah. interface is terrible. It's really slow. Yeah. Um, whereas the Windows PC would just you know just go right through it. It'd be really nice. And so even a low end Windows PC would be wonderful for that kind of thing. I mean, this is going to be the trend. This is what we're going to see this year. We're going to see a lot of these. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we're yeah. going to see these little sticks. Uh, the, these you know US uh, HDMI dongle type computers. Uh, that's going to become the trend again this year too. Uh, this is. The fascinating it's thing so is, funny, what you know, happens to changed. ARM? What what's what happens to the concept of using ARM? Because right. essentially, this is free for the the manufacturer to put on because it's eight point one with Bing. Yeah, so ARM uh, has a, a long life ahead of it, and because it's on Android devices, it's on Windows phones. You know, it's 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 there. Like it's not going anywhere. And I think on on actual highly mobile devices, non PC devices, that's ARM, right? And ARM like chipsets, like what Apple's do. Ar Apple stuff is basically ARM, is an offshoot of ARM, you know. Yeah, I, I don't, um, know. I don't, but Intel's doing well. It's, but so it's, good. I don't see it taking off in the PC space. I think is the point. Well, uh, ARM know, or ARM? No, but I'm talking uh, about mobile, right? In the mobile, in in the mobile space, Intel is really pushing to get back into mobile. Yeah, but I, I, you know, uh, so we've seen some Intel stuff in Android. Like, uh, in fact, I think one of the neat things about Android, which is one of the the things they were trying to make neat about Windows, was that is that you can go into a store and you can buy some Android tablet or whatever. You don't really have to know what the chipset is, and everything kind of basically works, right? Because it's you know it's really using virtual machine technology, you know, Java uh, on the back end and whatever. The apps just kind of work. Um, you don't have to think about it. And so if Intel were to come up with a better mousetrap, Intel could conceivably take over that market from ARM, I guess. Uh, I don't see that happening in the short term, to be honest. I think they've made important gains. But I, I still look at Intel stuff as being most advantageous to the non-ARM product lines, the PCs primarily, but also things, well, Macs, of course, which are PCs, and uh, possibly Chromebooks as well. And today you see a mix of ARM style and Intel style Chromebooks. Uh, and, you know, even on Chrome OS, people are discovering there are advantages to having the power of an Intel chipset in there. Um, and so I think that, 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 but I think that's, 
so far, that's the extent of it. Um, yeah, Curtis B in our chat room actually asks a really good question. Um, is the power saving on Intel now at or past ARM level? I, I don't yeah. know the answer to that. And it Right. And I, so I would, I'm just guessing, I, I bet it's not quite as efficient as ARM, but let's just say it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, let's say they're comparable, uh, roughly comparable. Um, I, I think ARM is just a known quantity to these device makers. You know, when you're make when Lenovo's making a new handset or a tablet or Dell is or Asus, not Asus actually, but um, you know, Samsung yeah. or whatever. You know, this the, the the guys that do their designs understand these systems. And this is what they work with. And you know, the the advantage of Intel, whatever it may be or may not be, doesn't really factor in because it's not a big enough advantage to counter their their years of experience and so we'll see you know i i, I don't i think intel has re-secured its place in that pc world yeah which is great good for them you know they, they've done this kind of come from behind thing before uh whether intel can transition into the wider world of arm it's amazing how a couple of years could change everything it was only a couple of years ago during that eight windows 8 announcement that we saw you know they had those sure. arm based pcs with running, yep. you know, Windows, and they were showing like, oh, look at these HP. These are lower end H uh, HP machines, and they're running ARM, and it's Windows, and yeah. that just never became a thing. I, I, I no, and I, I, I distinctly remember the Windows 8 launch and seeing the original version of the uh, the 11 inch version of the Yoga, the Lenovo Yoga, yeah, 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 and that version was RT, and the 13 inch version was was Intel, and I looked at this little. 11 inch really super thin thing and commented to whoever was standing there maybe mary joe or somebody uh, this would be a wonderful machine if it was just x86 you know i mean like nobody nobody wants like a laptop that doesn't run anything you know <laughs> it's like so useless um so now we have those you know now we really do big changes uh yeah and a lot we have a lot of stuff to get to so i'm just running down the list uh, if there's something that comes up chat room remind me uh, let us know because you know it's, things it's are notable. Being by the way, there was there was no yeah hi, hi, as I burn my leg on my space heater. It's it was notable to me that there were no major ARM Devices. announcements. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. And there certainly wasn't anything in the PC space, uh, which I think says a lot, you know, about the future of that. But we are getting a WebOS based smart uh, <laughs> yeah. smartwatch. Whew, we, finally, we, oh God, I've been dying for this. <laughs> I'm glad that LG. Did LG's you see my doing, comments on Twitter about yeah, that? Yeah, you said what did you say? Something about Amiga. I said, I'm waiting for the Amiga based bidet. <laughs> <laughs> would it work well? Web OS based do think, smartwatch. Do you think it would it would shoot up properly? <laughs> I think it would multitask. It, it would, would multitask, shoot up in yeah. multiple places. Everywhere. Water yeah. shooting out of everywhere. Uh, yeah. we there's so much to talk about. But uh, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on something before we go into it because I'm gonna forget. Uh Therot.com, Paul. Yep. I signed up for the newsletter. <laughs> Thank you. I went to therot.com. Uh, for people who don't know, do you want to go into detail about what you're doing and, and the next step yeah, for Paul Therot? Not, no details yet, but I mean, I, uh, I'm i basically concluding a 15 year run at the Super Safe Windows uh, and at Penton, which owns the Super Safe Windows. And, um, you know, no, there's nothing bad going on or whatever. I didn't get fired or laid off or anything, and I don't have anything. Uh, dirty to say about anyone there. I, I had great friends and still do who work there. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of time to move on. It was time. And so I'm partnering with a new company. Um, we're going to do Thrat.com together. And they'll be putting out the newsletter. And, um, you know, I'll continue to cover Microsoft largely, but, you know, consumer focused technology, you know, uh, much like I've been doing for, oh, these many years. <laughs> So, so nothing really is going to uh, change. Well, just the URL is going to change. The and, URL. Uh, yeah. But it's still the same stuff that you were writing on Win Super Site, the same content. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to cover the same topics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, starting over is hard, um, obviously, and weird. Um, but there's also some advantages to it. You know, when you when I look at the the kind of body of stuff that I cover – this gives me the opportunity to start anew on some stuff and, and to kind of take a step back and say, you know, here's a product like OneDrive, you know, that I've written a lot about. And when something new happens with OneDrive, I have to go back and look and say, okay, I've already, I wrote this and I wrote this and 
this used to work this way and how does this work? Whereas now I can kind of say, hey, here's OneDrive. This is what it is. You know, let's just start, let's just start from the beginning here, you know? And uh, I, I like that ability. And so I've been trying to work up the various, not just articles I'm going to write, but the, the sort of series of articles I'm going to write about building PCs and upgrading PCs, which is something I haven't done on the super site. But also uh, just go back and kind of write some kind of, here's the basics, you know, yeah. here's a, a, a big topic, Microsoft accounts, OneDrive, Xbox music, you know, whatever, and, and, and kind of build it up from scratch that way. So, um, you know, it's daunting in some ways, but it's, um, I've also ensured myself that I have several months of uh, very busy <laughs> work ahead of me. I mean, there's a lot to do. So, so uh, therot.com, uh, mm-hmm. I suggest going and signing up. Uh, I did this morning. I went there. I, I actually, I, I tried to go when you announced it on Wednesday, and mm-hmm. the site was getting hammered, I'm guessing, because yeah. I had some well, trouble it was, loading yeah, it. It, happened. it. It kind of was put together very quickly there. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm very excited to see what goes on there. And uh, this is a nice new uh, new step in your life, Paul. Something. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going transgender or anything. It's just nice, uh, you're transitioning. It, it, it into is a, definitely a change. A nice transition, for yeah. lack of a better term. Uh, yeah. I'm excited for this, Paul. And uh, you know, this is your name on it. It's Therot. You are the Therot. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's scary and weird, but sure. It's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be very cool, and I'm excited to see what comes from it. So, no details yet. Wait a couple of weeks until you know stuff settles, and I'm gonna, then you're I'm gonna, gonna have try more to get paid only in Bitcoin this time. And that's uh, a great we'll investment. That that's a great investment, Paul. <laughs> I suggest uh, the bank is in Mexico City. It'll yeah. be fine. Do they accept gold bullion? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Please pay me in gold bullions. Um, so let's talk about some more stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this as fast as I can. Something that I saw. Let's talk about TVs, and then we'll transition to the uh, the. The dish announcement because it's very interesting to me that the the sling TV announcement. But the trend this year uh, for televisions is slimmer and curved. Uh, OLED prices yeah. have not really dropped significantly. I was kind of anticipating we're going to see some more inexpensive OLED screens, OLED displays for televisions, but it's still uh, crazy expensive. And I'm hoping that it you know drops in price over the next couple of years because these displays are stunning. I, I saw Sony OLED couple of years ago and it was beautiful the display right but this curved trend is really becoming the mainstream now do you have any interest in a curved display uh you know i haven't seen one in person so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dump on it i mean i i, I kind of prefer having one screen and so this notion of one that kind of wrapped around a little bit i think just at the edges of your like the periphery of your vision might make some sense um I've I've heard that there are advantages to it, you know, for watching movies and things like that. Um, but yeah, I don't. Know. We'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. CNET had a Good had an games, article, you know, uh, over the summer, and they were talking about the benefits of a curved display, yep. and uh, why you might want to get a curved display. The problem with a curved display is it it obviously costs more to have the display curved. So sure. it's not going to be comparable in price. You know, it's not something that we're going to see uh, competitive pricing for. But this seems to be the trend. I'm I'm wondering if this is something that's going to stick. This is the next evolution of TVs. You know, we went from the it was curved the other way. Now we're curving outwards now instead of inwards with the tubes, you know, the, the yeah, tube TVs. Yeah. So I'm curious if this is going to become the main and, and this is how television is going to become uh, over the next decade or so. I remember. You know what I remember? When, oh God, who was it? I was talking to somebody from the, they, they worked, they worked for one of these manufacturers. I met them. I think it was at a meetup. It was uh, at the, my, your, one of your Microsoft meetups, the Windows meetups. And he was telling me mm-hmm. how the next trend is going to be wider displays. Instead of 16.9, it's going to be 16.10 or, or, or even yeah, wider. Crazy, no, crazy. What, like if crazy you, wide. um, some of the old movies used to be made in like this cinema scope kind of crazy widescreen, like once upon a time and. The West, I think, might have been like that, like a kind of a West, you know, like imagine like a Western style movie where it's just like the whole vista and it's just it's almost, you know, it's like a tennis game. You almost have to look <laughs> light right to left to see it. Yeah, um, I think that's I don't think that's going to be <laughs> mainstream. I mean, imagine you could fit probably four or five, four by three shows on that screen and that side by side. It'd be silly. Um, I, you know, I don't know I, I. How much bigger, how much thinner can we go before we've kind of. 
But you know, the whole thing about the size, like it's like the size wars. Like uh, Samsung has a 105 inch uh, TV, you know, that they, they're displaying. You have to remember that the screen size in, that you have for a television, when you go to pick up, pick a screen size, you have to base that on how far you are from the screen. You can get yeah. a 65 inch TV, you can get a 75 inch TV, but you're, if you're only six feet away from the TV, it's going to look like garbage. You're going to see the pixels inside. So, right, 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 right. A right. hundred. I don't think any of us right now. Do you have a room that you could put a 105 inch display in where oh, it's, you no. could sit? I could put it on the side of my house. Is what I can do. With <laughs> you it. There's know? no. Yeah, I don't have that kind of a room. You know, I got you a know, nice the, size living room. Our living room is small. It, it, the distance between we have between the couch and the TV is very short. So I don't. Really, I don't know exactly what I have in there right now. It's not that big. It's probably 48 inches, something like that. I mean, when this thing dies, we'll, we will get a thinner device that has a smaller bezel and all that kind of stuff. It might, it might be 52 inches or something, but we're, we're, we're reaching the, the maximum size for this room. I mean, unless we wanted to reorient it sideways or something and, you know, use the, the bigger length. I, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, I, I think like the sex factor for the sexiness for a lot of these TVs, you know, that's what it is. You just go and you show something crazy and it's beautiful and it's uh, right. bezel-less. Well, I mean, 4, 4K thin. matters. I mean, it, it's sure. not just size. I mean, it's never pixels. Uh, the display technology is going to matter. Um, you know, there's things like that. But, uh, you know, sound will, matters to some people, not to others, too. I mean, the different type of sound system, sound bars, you know, whatever. Um but yeah, I mean, I, as far as like actual size, I mean, at some point you just reach the reach the physical limit of the room. It's really not possible. I think you know, sixty five yeah, inch uh, a sixty five inch TV is uh, for for most of us. That is that's the limit for yeah, I would most say, I would people. Think so, yeah. You know, when you're buying yeah. a TV, uh, some of the other stuff that we saw, you know, smart smarter TVs, faster uh, quad core TVs, uh, same thing as last year. The four K TVs, uh, obviously. It's going to be a big year for 4K TVs. They're dropping in prices. Yep. They're totally affordable. Uh, next holiday season, I expect, it's going to be all about 4K. Nobody's going to be talking about 1080. Uh, sure. But we have not seen, as far as a 4K TV, there's still very little content that you could get on a 4K TV. I don't even, I don't think that yeah, Blu-ray but, is in 4K yet, right? I, I, right. I mean, or, so, th but this is the, always the argument, right? I mean, DVD uh, going to 16 by 9, HD. You know, every every step along the way, the argument has always been, well, there's no content available in this format, you know. Um, you know, there will be. And and it's a chicken egg thing. But, um, you know, for those places where you can get 4K, I think Netflix is delivering some content in 4K, uh, which I think is going to be a much bigger deal than some disk-based you know, Amazon, of Amazon is doing it. Yeah. And, and channels will too. And that's yeah. going to be the thing. So, you know, you remember how we switched over from uh, – standard definition to HD um there'll be 4K channels or whatever they might they'll probably give it a different name than 4K I, I was I was having this discussion with uh with somebody the other day and we were talking about what was it like do we remember if we, if any of us were early adapters to HD which I was I got an HD TV in 2002 yeah. 2003 how many channels existed on the cable oh. cable network at that point and I remember the exact number it was 8 it was it, I, I was going to say channels. 5 yeah it was it wasn't many yeah. and it was discovery it was uh, HDNet. Exactly. Uh, the networks, like some of the networks. HDNet was the poster child for HD. You just yeah. watch it. And they would just have commercials for HD. It would be animals running in slow motion. Yeah, frogs. Be like an insect walking up a bark. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, like, it, and you'd sit there, oh, you know, like, it's just so awesome. It was beautiful. You know, so. And 4, 4K is going to have the same impact. Uh, 4K is going to have the same impact, but is 4k the equivalent because right now 4k is still it's not a standard really like 4k it's it's weird it's no, not and that's really why 4k I said that and they're, yeah they're not going to call it 4k they're going to call it something ultra you know, hd some, let's say yeah, that's the term yeah, but it's gonna be something very simple is 4k the equivalent of what 720 was you know like think about no, it right not, it's a little different because up through 1080p and again like you kind of touched on this a little bit with the di distance and so forth but thinking about normal TV sizes, normal living room sizes, normal distance from that screen. Um, 1080p and 720p too, by the way, you know, had this effect on you where you looked at the screen and thought, wow, th th this makes it feel like my vision has gotten better. You know, it's impressive. 
Um, I think the difference between that and what's going to happen with whatever they call 4K plus, whatever, is that we're going to reach an effective limit of vision where once you can't see the pixels at all, no matter how hard you look, yeah. it, all, it doesn't matter it doesn't how matter. many pixels you add at that point. And yeah. so some shows will stream or be shown in what, you know, 4K, some will be 5K, some will be 6K. But it doesn't it, really matter. It doesn't matter. really matter. Uh, I pro I'm thinking, you know, uh, I'm just guessing based on my limited understanding of the science. But once you can't discern the pixels, I'm not really sure the quality improves past this point. And so I, I think this is going to be a profound change visually. Um, but I also think we're at the limits of what you can do now with, you know, flat screen on the wall, you know, it, that for TV to become more immersive after that. It has to change in other ways that aren't just about resolution and pixels. And stuff. Oh, yeah, it's definitely it's not only about resolution. I mean, you talk about resolution, but yeah, you could have a 4K TV. But what is your cable provider sending you this signal at? What's the bit rate? How much compression is involved in this? You know, you look at some channels and it's 1080, you know, 1080 I, let's say you're watching a 1080 I football game on one channel. You're watching it on another one and it's totally distorted and it looks nothing like the other channel because they're compressing it or they're splitting the the qualm channel you know whatever they're doing they're doing multiple mm -hmm. channels so the bit rate is less uh these are things that actually matter when we talk about 4k for netflix 4k mm -hmm. on netflix is not going to be the same as what the cable company is going to provide because the cable company is providing you at a much higher bit rate than what netflix is doing so <laughs> especially if you're on verizon especially if you're on verizon but, yeah <laughs> but I mean, the other issue too is if any, you know, if you have a Netflix subscription or Amazon, uh, you know that you know ninety percent of the stuff that's on there is garbage. It's like these B movies that were probably targeting the Sci-Fi Channel at one point. And I they, can't wait till the Wizard. Gonna... I can't wait till the Wizard of Oz is in AK, <laughs> Paul. Yeah, it's there's we... a lot of that stuff is not going to be upscaled well. Uh, you but... can see the stitching on Dorothy's dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, but uh, you know, a lot of stuff was made on film and is made on film or is made on HD plus resolution uh, digital today. And I, I think there's going to be a lot of content that's going to look awesome in this format. And I, and I think I speak on behalf of at least 30% of the planet when I say I cannot wait to buy Star Wars all over again. So, you know, make that happen. Yeah, somebody, you know, James in our chat brought up a good point because it's the same thing for audio, right? If your ears are not up, up to it, then why What's bother? The What's the yeah. difference? You don't hear it. I, I'm one of the people. I'm one of these people that hears everything. I have when it comes I to always, quality. Yeah, you I hear always it think back to this. You know, when the 1980s, uh, we saw the introduction of CD audio, which I'm positive was described to us at the time as perfect. And then, of course, DVDs came out. And uh, if I if I remember correctly, the selling point of DVDs was this is as good as it looks in the movies. Yeah. And both of those things are incredibly low resolution. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, CD audio is compressed. It is not a perfect master of that music. Uh, and, I mean, you would not accept a display in front of you that was 720 by 480. I mean, that's ludicrous. That's lower than eight, SVGA, which was 800 by 600. Um, and, by the way, dates back 25 years. So, you know, these things were advances for the day. But I think now we see the technology where we have exceeded what we can hear and what we can see uh, yeah, just because I, of our physical limitations, you know? Absolutely. I mean, listen, most, you know how many people you put on a, a, a channel and they don't even know it's an HD. They cannot, I mean, <laughs> I, and I'm, we've and become I'm, so jaded to it. And I'm know? so serious about this. There, there are people that cannot even tell that something's HD <laughs> and it's standard. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not I, joking. Uh, I think there are many people out there. I have people in my family that, Put on like let's say CBS, right? They're watching the football game, and it's oh, everything is widescreen now. I, I swear, it, everything. To, or, and the worst one is when they actually they actually stretch out an SD channel, yeah, so that it fits the screen. It's like, guys, seriously, yeah. So, and I, you and are I asked probably them. harming your vision by watching this. But Paul, I'll say like, hey, why aren't you watching it in HD? And he goes, I am. And I go, no, you're not. And I put on yeah. the HD channel. They go, I don't see a difference. And, you know on, what do you say to that? On my cable box, um, I, we can choose between SD and HD channels. Like there's different versions, right? And if you just go to the normal guide, you get everything. So I don't remember the ranges, but let's say the 400s of the normal channels and the 800s of the HD channels, you know, for broadcast TV. Um, there's a there's a button sequence you can go through just to show HD, which is what I always do. Yeah, I wish Verizon did that. I mean, it's, it's like three buttons. You have to go boop, boop, yeah. get into it. And now you have a version of the guy that's only HD. And my whole thing is like, just I, I don't 
want the other stuff. I don't care what's there. Yeah, I, I don't Just care. show me the HD stuff. It, it's, it's amazing. Like Verizon does not give you that ability. I know Comcast does where if you put on like, let's say, Channel 2, which is CBS yeah. here. It'll go to the high def channel. It'll default right. to high def because it knows you have a high def channel. Verizon, no. I, I don't ever. Why would see, anybody want to watch? CBS? I don't ever want to see SD con. I want that. I want there to be a checkbox. This is never. Show, I don't care what it is. I'll pay care. you more. I'll give you I, back a I couple months. I will pay you more. Yeah. <laughs> Just get it's rid of it. Ten bucks a month. Don't ever show me SD con. <laughs> That's so uh, weird. But I would, I would probably pay for that. Actually. So we were talking about game changes before, right? Uh, and what is there a serious game changer? I, I, I feel like there is one. The one announcement that could possibly be a game changer, and that was Dish's Sling TV. Uh, it's an it's a set top. It's it's Dish's, I guess, internet TV, right? It's twenty bucks a month, and it works on the Xbox One, Roku, uh, on your PC, Amazon Fire uh, TV, Amazon Stick, iOS, Android, all these tablets. You pay twenty yep. bucks, and you get you know a, a bunch of channels. And you're getting ESPN, ESPN2, Disney, ABC Family, Food Network, uh, mm -hmm. HGTV, Travel, TNT, CNN, TBS, uh, Cartoon Network, Adult, adult, which is Adult Swim. Uh, yep. This is interesting. 20 bucks, but it's per device. You can't get $20 and have it on every device. 20 bucks per device, right. and you're getting a very limited amount of channels. If you really want it over the air, you get an antenna, you put an antenna on your... In, on the TV, and, and you're fine. Now you have over the year channels, but uh, it's missing out a lot. Like, if it had USA, because I watch wrestling, obviously, if it had USA, I would get it immediately. I don't care for anything else. Like, this would be it. This is all I would get. If I got a cable, if I got this for every room that has a cable box, I'm still paying a significantly less amount than I would for cable. Yes. Right. Because I have right. two, two, four, six, The problem six, is, eight. you know, I, it's 100 but, bucks. Okay, so this is going to become deregulated almost, uh, and and honestly, there's going to be a problem because right now I think the argument is I'm paying cable a lot of money and I'm getting a lot of channels I never watch, and if I could just pick a la carte, you know, I could save money. But the the truth is, that's actually not going to work out in reality, um, because there is going to be stuff that you can't watch, including local sports, you know. Uh, and things like that. And so I, I, I'm a little worried about the, you know, cable companies are evil and I get all that kind of stuff, but I, this whole a la carte approach, uh, could eventually come back to bite us in the ass as it has done with, um, air travel. So let, let's say, I mean, they're targeting millennials, right? That, that, because yeah. they don't, they don't pay for TV, obviously. Right, and and that's, they have no idea what they're doing. Yes. They don't pay for television. They don't watch yep. TV. My brothers sure. don't watch TV at all. Yeah, they're, um, they're really busy people. They must be doing stuff. Yeah, they're, they're looking at they're looking at cat. <laughs> yeah, videos. they're so busy. Yeah, they, I mean, they don't watch TV. That's all they do is go to look at cat videos. So <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, they have they're to come up with an option for them. Four square. Yeah, they're checking in on four. Uh, listen, I do that all the time, all the <laughs> sure. time. Um, so something like this, yeah, you're paying twenty bucks and you get the news and you're getting you know some channels, but if it's the channels that you want to watch, then that's great. If you want to watch USA and you want to watch Discovery. And, well, Discovery's on you. You want to watch something else and it's not on there. Obviously, this isn't for you. But this is Here, a nice little thing. option. It's it's like limited cable. It's like minus cable. But but <laughs> if you only watch what you want to watch, then that's all you know about that's on TV. You know? I mean, one of the interesting things about TV is that you you can mindlessly click around and you may come across something that's interesting that you've never heard of. I mean, if, if you look, were to look at your cable box and say, I only want these 13 channels, I know this is all I ever watch, then you've just limited yourself for the rest of your life to never finding out potentially what's going on anywhere else. Yeah, but the, the, their argument, so when they announced this, they, they were talking about millennials, and they said majority of people that are going to buy this also have Netflix and they have Hulu. So they are getting content and they are exposed to content. It's just not live content. I, okay. I'll tell you, I don't. I have not discovered a new show on TV uh, that I like. I've discovered everything on demand through, you know, Showtime on demand or whatever it is. Like I started watching Master yeah. Masters well, at Sex. Mm. It's a great show. It's on Showtime. I would have never watched it live, but I am watching it because it's archived. So, yep, 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 yep. 
I think this concept of binge watching is yep. the new way of watching television for a lot no, of people. I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Live's I mean, it, you, have, you have to be able to find out about it. I, I mean, it depends on the channel. I mean, uh, the Showtime thing you're talking about. If you don't have Showtime, you might not have even heard of it, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree with you on, uh, on that kind of stuff. Uh, that said, there's, I mean, you know, my wife and I usually eat lunch together. And, by the way, thank you for screwing that up today. Yeah, well. So, <laughs> no, but when we do that, we sit in the den and we watch 30 minutes of something, House Hunters, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's more of a kind of, you know, it, it, it's it's recorded usually. Um, but it's not it's not like some important series of ongoing anything. Like we don't watch 30 minutes of some show on HBO and then tomorrow we watch the next 30 minutes. You know, like we don't do that. And so, but I think a lot of TV viewing is that. It's not so much like you're sitting there totally engaged. You're maybe talking to each other. You're not paying attention. You're doing stuff with paperwork. You're working on a computer. It's just kind of on. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be like this detailed kind of thing. I don't know. For, for me, I, I don't watch any live content anymore. I mean, I, I it's, it's, it doesn't happen. I, I haven't watched a live show. I mean, like I haven't said, oh my God, the, the, uh, shameless is on i gotta watch it live you know that hasn't happened the only time i do that is with sporting events that's the only important thing and with this you have espn and espn2 and over the air obviously you could just get an antenna for like 20 bucks hd antenna and get it so uh, local games are going to be available i think that's how most people are seeing this um I'm, I'm interested to see how well this does and if they add more channels to this right, right. you know like verizon has an app on the Xbox, uh, if Verizon said, listen, we're going to cut on the channels. We're only going to do, uh, you know, yeah. limited channels. Let's say instead of 300, I mean, you're but, getting 50 and you're paying 40 bucks a month. I think a lot of people would opt into that. Yeah, but that's not what the app is, right? Yeah. It, it, the app is a subset of what you get on Verizon that you can put out to second or third TVs in your house, right? Instead of having the full cable box experience. Um, it, it's a an accessory or whatever. It's kind of an add on, you know, I mean, think about, think about how many people are watching podcasts instead of watching te television. Now it's, I mean, you're competing with it. You're, you're taking away the viewer from that show because right now from 12 to one, we we've been on the air and you could have been watching something else, but you're not, you're watching two guys on the internet ramble. <laughs> yep. Must see TV. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I, I'm curious to see what they do. Also, uh, AT&T made an announcement. We'll talk about this quickly, and then we'll go into our uh, prediction show right after this. AT&T is following T-Mobile with rollover data. This is phenomenal. I love this. Yeah, but, uh, you know, each of these uh, companies have certain limitations on the plans that, you know, make them a little less than ideal. I, I Ultimately, I think what AT&T is doing is probably better, although there's no reason... T-Mobile couldn't fix that in that uh, it's an ongoing thing. Like the T-Mobile the thing is a promotion. It's for one year only. It's uh, aimed at new customers, but existing customers can take advantage of it. And they also roll over across months. And so if you don't use two gigabytes in January, you get them added to February. But if you don't use them again, you, you know, they, they keep going forward. Yeah. AT&T's is just month to month. But actually, I still think that's pretty good. It's better. Um, it's better than, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm wondering if Verizon is going to follow with this. There's no way they don't do it. Yeah, I mean they they have to. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. I'm sure they'll screw it up in some way. Kind of begs the question. I mean, just have unlimited data. Yeah. You know? At this point, I mean, really, like, I, I just have it. And and if you're in the top, they can set it. They can set a policy. They be very transparent about it and say. If you were in the top 1% of data usage, 1%, 2%, whatever, yeah. we are going to throttle you at 10 gigabytes or something. You know, uh, just be really clear about it. Because that's all, that was their issue with unlimited. Like the top, it was really small. Like 1% was ruining it for everyone. Well, you know, why don't you just fi fix that problem then? You know, make them pay for it. Uh, it I'm, just seems like there's a way around this. The, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what the what the uh, decision is for for them in the future with this. I think 2015. We'll talk about this in a prediction. I think we're going to start seeing changes to the way that the carriers are uh, doing. You know, their their idea of data and caps, and and I think more and more people are using 
wireless data and 4G data over yeah. anything else. Yep. So they're going to have to change the way that they practice. Um, interesting. All right, Paul, time to wrap it up. What do you say? Sounds good. Uh, go to our website, gfknetwork.com. Uh, right after this, if you're watching live, we're going to do our prediction show. Uh, it's going to be on Patreon. Uh, it's going to be archived there. Uh, Patreon.com slash what the tech. You can fund us. You can give us anything and you get access to these bonus shows. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes we have a lot to say. That's the best. That's the best way to promote this, right? Sometimes yeah, you, you, you never know. know. Yeah, you never know what you're getting with us. Uh, sometimes it's going to be crap. Yeah, and sometimes we're going to do a good job. I think today we're going to do a really good job. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash what the tech uh, to see our archives for our bonus shows. Everything is archived there right after we do the show. Uh, currently, winsuperside.com for all things Paul Tharaj. You're going to be there for a little longer? Uh, so yeah, through yeah. next Friday. Through next yep. Friday. Uh, after that, therot.com, the new and improved Paul Tharaj. He shaved his head, and he's starting a new website. Yeah, I went to, yeah I'm going down to my fighting weight. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 <laughs> yes, he's been training. <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on it's Twitter. Be a training montage later. I, I would love to see that. You're just punching like raw meat, <laughs> like in a in a locker. Uh, at Andrew Zarian on Twitter. You can follow Paul at the Rot at GFK Network, and you can subscribe to us where everywhere podcasts are available. I want to thank Harry's for supporting What the Tech today. Use offer code What the Tech at checkout and get five dollars off your first purchase at Harry's. Harry's.com. We'll see you all next week on What the Tech. Bye bye for now.